Hearts broken, more Central Texas families are grieving over the loss of loved ones to accidental overdoses. Texas Longhorn linebacker Jake Ellinger's family says he died last May from what they believe to be Xanax laced with fentanyl. The synthetic opioid is up to 100 times stronger than morphine. And a breakdown of the CDC data by KXAN investigators shows that synthetic opioid deaths like fentanyl have rapidly increased across the U.S. In the most recent 12 months of CDC data, more than 62,000 Americans died from synthetic opioids. And while most of the country saw a surge, KXAN investigator Arzo Dost reveals overdoses from synthetic opioids like fentanyl actually dropped in four states over a year. The Omicron variant now detected right There's been a surge in COVID-19. COVID antibodies decrease. Another variant may be on the horizon. COVID has dominated the headlines in the last few years. But if you take a closer look, in 2020, the leading cause of death in 18 to 45 year olds in the U.S. was fentanyl overdoses. According to Families Against Fentanyl, an organization formed to raise awareness of the drug's dangers. The group says that's more than suicide, COVID, and car accidents. It's what some recovery programs are also seeing in Central Texas. So it's probably every one to four, every one to five that are coming in that are taking these press pills that they have bought on the street. Zach Timber is with Rise Recovery Services. It's housed at family hospital systems, which includes freestanding ERs and hospitals in Round Rock and near Lake Travis. They specialize in non-narcotic medical stabilization for substance abuse patients. Pressed Xanax, pressed Adderall, pressed hydrocodone, and uh, it seems that they're all containing fentanyl. How have some of these patients been lucky enough to survive something with fentanyl in it? It's purely been luck. Timber says education about the dangers of fentanyl needs to target younger Texans and changes need to be made statewide because fentanyl deaths are only getting worse. In Texas, CDC data shows since January of 2020, deaths caused by synthetic opioids like fentanyl have increased quickly, becoming more common than cocaine and heroin. From 2019 to 2020, there were 658 synthetic opioid deaths in the state. The next year, that number more than doubled to 1,482 overdoses. While the majority of the country saw a spike in overdose deaths from synthetic opioids like fentanyl, the numbers went down during the most recent 12-month span of data available in New Hampshire, Delaware, New Jersey, and the greatest decrease in South Dakota. We repeatedly asked the South Dakota Health Department and Governor's Office about why that is, but so far they haven't answered our questions. The other states point to solutions making a difference. One life lost is one too many. So if we can get naloxone in people's hands and save lives, we're gonna, we're gonna do everything we can to make that possible. In New Jersey, since last August, anyone can go to a pharmacy and pick up naloxone without a prescription. It's a life-saving medication used to reverse an opioid overdose. The state expanded access after seeing the success during naloxone giveaway days starting in 2019. Since then, 64,000 doses have been picked up at pharmacies. On those giveaway days, we saw that huge need in the community um, that people had to be able to go to a pharmacy and pick it up, maybe not for themselves, but so that they do have it on hand um, for a loved one or a friend or a coworker who may they, they may know struggle uh, with addiction. The state says one of the challenges early on was getting pharmacies to voluntarily participate and approval was needed from the New Jersey Board of Pharmacy to distribute naloxone for free with no prescription or identification. The state health department also launched an overdose data dashboard, which shows information about naloxone use, treatment, opioid prescriptions, and drug-related hospital visits. New Hampshire unfortunately experienced fentanyl, deaths uh, prior to the many other states. In New Hampshire, the state increased drug treatment programs, added 600 prescribers who could treat using buprenorphine, a drug that can curb withdrawal symptoms and craving, and during the pandemic made it available through telemedicine. 
The state also launched a program in 2019, which provides 24-7 access to treatment and naloxone and ensures that help is less than an hour away from anywhere in the state. We have created an opioid data dashboard that we use to monitor the situation from a variety of standpoints. And we use this to tailor our policies and implement our programs. Each number of an overdose death is a family member. In Delaware, it's been all hands on deck. And we wanted to ensure that when people needed help, they got help immediately and did not have to wait. Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long, who is also a nurse, was among those hitting the streets and trying to reach people needing help, especially during the pandemic. She says the state worked with a recovery program to move treatment services to a hotel, provided high risk individuals cell phones to be able to stay connected either by phone or virtually and passed out naloxone kits and information at COVID vaccine sites. The way we measured our success at the time is we looked at the number, the, the period of time people stayed in recovery. And so that alone for us was a huge success where the average person may have stayed in for 30 days. Um, they were in the hotel setting for more than 60 days in some cases. You know, I get jealous sometimes, you know, because people say, well, no, you can do it because you're small. Actually, the large states have as much capacity, if not more ability. Could these solutions work here in our state? The Texas Health and Human Services says it was awarded $250 million and it's in the process of allocating funds to substance use treatment providers. A spokesperson says the federal funds will be used for substance use related needs, including developing a 24 7 virtual substance use disorder clinic that will offer virtual treatment services. We wanted to know what Governor Greg Abbott would be focusing on this year. His office says the state is tackling our crisis with border security and a new law increasing criminal penalties for manufacturing or distributing fentanyl. But researchers right here at UT say that's not fixing what's happening in our state. Tomorrow night after the Olympics, solutions they think the state needs to put into place to save more Texans. Arzo Dost, KXAN Investigates. Thanks, Arzo. And as we mentioned, UT Longhorn Jake Ellinger's family says he died of an accidental overdose. His family is not ready to speak. Last summer, we shared a similar story about 19-year-old Cameron Stewart from Cedar Park. His family says he died after taking a fentanyl-laced Valium pill. Since his death, his mom, Becky, created a change for Cam and has started talking to students across Central Texas about the dangers of fentanyl. A panel of experts will join her at the end of the month for a discussion moderated by Arzo. We have more details online in this story in the investigative section of KXAN.com.